Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to look at the life cycle of stars. Remember last time when we were discussing stars that we said nuclear fusion is what's going on inside the core of stars, and that's what produces the energy there taking the hydrogen, hitting, pulling them together under gravity, eventually forming helium and some energy. Well, depending on the amount of matter there, a star's path will be determined. So the life cycle of stars is determined by this star forming nebula, probably the most important part. This diagram I'd get down, you're going to see this a number of times through this screencast. This is the starting point, step one depending on whether we go this way or to stars like ours will be determined by its mass most important thing with stars well second to nuclear fusion so let's get into this uh this is in our reference table characteristics of stars chart and here uh it goes into just the different varieties or the different types of stars that we'll see we're going to go through this definitely a couple more times but just as so you see it, this is in our reference table to help us out a little bit. Okay, so stars start off as nebula. These are star nurseries. This is where there is the matter to start coming together, coalescing on the gravity to start this whole process of star formation. So this is probably one of the more important parts. Stars are born from clouds of gas and dust originating from the Big Bang. All the energy in the universe comes from nebulas is because here, as these coalesce together, come together under gravity, and nuclear fusion begins, the energy is, is then, at that time, produced through nuclear fusion. Here's the Horsehead Nebula, named because it looks like a horse head. Um, Crab Nebula, you can see amazing images that are taken with our satellites and telescopes. Okay, and moving on. So once we have a nebula established, it is now up to that point for it to come together under gravity and start getting to either be massive stars or stars like our sun main sequence stars like our sun are uh, pretty much the average of stars this is what we typically see out in space um, these are average size and temperature and stars spend most of their time as main sequence stars like our sun uh, which is a main sequence star and our sun once again is about halfway through its life cycle it's been uh, fusing together uh, hydrogen for now 5 billion years and can do so for another 5 billion years. So we're good to go for a little while. Like I said earlier, what determines the fate of stars is the mass that it has. Low mass stars will eventually become white dwarfs. High mass stars can eventually become black holes. Now there's lots of things that it can become in between. We're going to be looking at the lowest mass and our highest mass. So our sun is a relatively low mass star. It's a main sequence star, and eventually it's gonna run out of hydrogen. When that happens, the temperature is gonna drop a little bit, the core of the sun will expand, kind of counterintuitive to what we think. At that point, it will become a red giant. It's gonna get even bigger. And when it does that, it's gonna get bigger and bigger, and then those three planets that are in its innermost orbits are gonna get engulfed, Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth, probably getting up to about Earth, some say a little bit smaller, some say a little bit bigger. But that's how big it's going to get. It's, it's, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, engulfing all those planets in their orbits. So at that point, we were the star-forming nebula, stage one. Then we get to the sun-like star in stage two. Now in between here, we have a protostar. It's like uh, not there yet at a star. Eventually going into our red giant phase. This is where it expands. After that, what's going to happen is, is after it's done fusing that helium, it's going to eject this planetary nebula from it. And at that point, it will become a white dwarf. Then what we'll have is some of this gas and dust left over, which may go into a forming of the star. But then this is the fate. This is where our sun will end. So when looking at the characteristics of stars chart, this is where they spend most of their life, right here. And if you look, here's our sun. Notice the surface temperature on the bottom. Extremely important to realize with the surface temperature. It starts low over here, and it moves to a high temperature, counter to what we typically see. But here's our sun. Okay, so it's, that's about uh, 57, 5800 degrees Kelvin, or Kelvin, sorry. 
you know, luminosity about one, luminosity will go more into, uh, but when you compare the sun to itself, it has a ratio of one. And it also shows here that it's a relatively average star. This is where it starts, right here. Then what it's gonna happen, notice it jumps up into that red giant phase. And look, when we look down, we can see red right here. And it also gets cooler. And then what eventually happens is it going to sink all the way down, the white dwarf, and then cool off over time. So this green line would have just path here. So we have one, two, three, and then off and goes down and dies into existence. We can map out the life cycle of stars using the characteristics of stars chart. And this is just going to show again that that size of that red giant, our sun, will expand after it has run out of burning hydrogen. And this is then eventually what's going to happen is become a white dwarf. That's our sequence for our uh, star, for our sun. And you can just see here the relative sizes. Here's the sun, the earth, right? Makes sense. We know the sun's a lot bigger, but a white dwarf star, you can see extremely small. So our sun will eventually become that white dwarf, uh, very small, only about the size of planet Earth, so not much, but they are extremely dim. They have a low luminosity, and they represent the last stage of the sun. And that's pretty much it as far as what's going to happen with our sun. And at that point, uh, it's just an extremely hot ball of uh, matter at that point, and it'll cool down, eventually going white. Uh, getting dimmer and dimmer as time goes on, as all that energy radiates off. There's no fusion during the white dwarf. These are just white dwarf stars that are all circled right here. You can see they don't shine very bright. Now we can go to the other route towards a massive star. Notice that the r massive stars start here as nebula also. And as they go through, they're just bigger. Notice this lighter color right here, this whitish blue. There's a lot of energy that's being produced that we can see. And then there's a red giant phase. And eventually what's going to happen is this is going to end in a supernova, this massive explosion. And notice how it can become a black hole, a neutron star, or become nebula once again to kind of go through this process. And we can see that on here. So as we're these massive stars, these super giants right here, this is where we're looking at. Notice that the colors white, blue, blue, white, and blue of these massive stars right here, extremely hot. Supernova explosion, like I said, this is that end result of these massive stars, or one of the end results, uh, and also black holes. So black holes are forming when extremely massive stars collapse in on themselves. Density is so great, it creates an extense gravitational field. Uh, remember, the more matter in the area, the higher the gravitational effect. So these extremely massive stars are going to be pulling in stuff at, at, at our, sorry, matter at a certain point. Um, we cannot directly see them since they are black. Basically, all not even light can escape them. And they can be located when stars around them seem to glow brighter as they start pulling gases away from those stars. Okay. But we also see that black holes warp space-time. Uh, with these images right here. And we'll go over a little bit more of this in class, but you can see the more mass you have, the bigger the hole you'll put in this kind of like fabric of space. Let's take a look at it again. And uh, that's about it. That's enough for uh, stars at this point. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll go more into this in class. Take care.